photography works in lots of different ways. It's like infinite and I'm still exploring all that. And that's my job, that's what I do. I was always on the street taking pictures and kids got to know me. They'd always be saying, take our picture. I became known as Photy Man because I was the one who took, took the photies. I know this book's gonna happen and I'd like one more shot to do a sustained amount of work in Ireland, just to photograph solidly, to, to try and pull loose ends together. We're at the Farmer's Mart in Balanano, which is the biggest town probably in, in Mayo. God bless you, God bless you. will I get it to you? If I leave it in the mart, yeah, yeah, you want to come back yeah. in the spring? Yeah. They'll give it to you, won't they? Yeah. Well, God bless you. Certainly the, the, the kind of older farmers who still have one foot in the old ways, they're disappearing and they're, um, whatever the spirit there is about them, um, uh, I'd like to catch a bit of that. In fact, you know, I don't think, it, yeah, and in, in a way that um, wasn't a cliche documentary shot. I'm interested, I suppose, there's a fellow now coming through the door who's maybe 75 with a stick. And he's speaking to some of the other farmers. My response would be to get up and take a picture of him. <laughs> so, there you go. That's the situation where we're strangers um, and the guy walks in and says, don't take pictures of me. That's how it was in the shipyard. I ended up going there for maybe nearly two years, one or two days a week. No one paid me, really. I'd wear the same old clothes, I wouldn't shave. I would just, you know, blend in and be part of, and because you go back week after week, eventually, you know, you're part of the scene. And the way I work is, is uh, I'm just doing, get to know people, go back over and over again, so uh, that, that wouldn't happen. And I would, more importantly, I'll be less self-conscious. Because I, I go there, and this is what I do, I bring pictures back, you get to know people. And, the, the, you know, just, just the eye contact, the rapport with people is always interesting. I'm Irish, I was born here. I was born in near Cross Malina. I know, I had, I had an Irish accent. You speak like where I was, and you're a Norwegian. Like a Norwegian, yeah, probably. <laughs> so I, I, had, I had an Irish accent when I was a boy, for sure. I had a Catholic mother, Protestant father, and, and we ended up going to England, but I always came back every summer for the holidays, you know, oh, and took right. pictures. Oh, yeah. And now they're going to make a book. I'm 90 years. You're not? I am 90 years. And, uh, <laughs> Wasn't that fantastic? He's fantastic. I, I, knew, I knew when he was passing there, he was the right man for you. Yeah, Unbelievable. Man. The older I've got, I'd say the more pictures I take, and the easier it is to do it. So when I was stood up there with the auctioneer, you know, I, I know which lens I've got on there. All the time the camera is, is just down here at my waist or at my chest, I'm still taking pictures. You know, if I raise it to my eye, that might change the situation. But the little, all those little gestures and stuff, you know, what's going on between those guys, I'm interested in that. Um, so it could be there in one frame, you know, the way the guy lo looks up to the, the auctioneer, those little things. 
that, that's the kind of dance thing you're doing. I can make 50 pictures around an interesting scene and 48 are okay, have interesting things with them, but don't live, don't work. But one or two may go, you know, something else happens. I could easily come here every week for years, easily. And give something back as well in the end, that would be great. Because I didn't drive, I spent a lot of time on buses every day. By way of exploring Merseyside, I would take pictures. So uh, I began that in 1978 and carried on doing it till I left Merseyside. So that's like over 20 years um, of pictures. You couldn't jump off the bus and ask someone's permission. So you just had to take it. That's all part of the, the whole learning process of doing candid pictures. You're moving along very fast. Uh, it's fractions of seconds, and uh, if you think about it, it's gone. I used outdated cine film because it was very cheap. From about 1989, I used all color. I spent my life doing that. That's just normal. But uh, sometimes it's two hours or whatever and the journey becomes part of the whole working process. And then you get off somewhere and you've already been working and that momentum carries you through the day. And you do the same on the way back. Off to uh, Hickson's, the oldest drapery store in Cross Line Road. I've been going in there for years, taking pictures in there. I remember this, this store when I was a child and coming back and going in here and buying stuff. Um, yeah. And then when I, I came back first in 1975, oh, yes. I met Tom Hickson and he was just such a, an interesting character. Oh, very much, yeah. Uh, and he had all this wonderful, um, this wonderful shop full of clothes that seemed to go back 50 years. And then I couldn't find maybe something that, that would suit me, would be correct, and he would disappear upstairs and come down <laughs> with like three versions of whatever it was. Now, I don't expect anything here, Geraldine, but over the years, I always said, as I said to you about Mr. Hickson, I'd love to look upstairs where he used to go and bring all this stuff down. Oh, I'm I sure it's it. just empty up there and you wouldn't want me to look, but I'd love to look up there. It's, um, it's it just in very bad uh, condition, condition at the moment. It's I'm just, sure. you know, because um, I don't use that part. Is there all, anything up there, though? I mean, I'd just love to see. Could I go and have a look without a camera? Just leave the camera and just have a look. Suppose you could. Now look at this. This is unbelievable. You know, this is it. This is just amazing. This is a piece of art in itself. This one shot, just looking there. Those bunch of shoes over there is incredible. In the other rooms, you wouldn't believe what's in the other rooms. Everywhere here is, is, is just, it's great. It's really good, just as exciting as, as uh, the landscape outside. It's amazing to be up here after all these years. I can't believe this. It's uh, every, everywhere, every arrangement looks like uh, I should be taking a picture of it. I gladly spend a whole week in here. But for now, I'm kind of making notes. Um, I'd worry something might happen and I couldn't get back in here. Uh, but uh, at the moment, so I would photograph what I can. It's just a great place. In fact, I liked Mr. Hickson so much. To come up here and see all this stuff is, is really sad, but at the same time, uh, I don't know. I'm, 
I think it's amazing. I mean, I've been to places like this for so many years. Uh, you know, someone would emigrate and you'd, you know, you'd see this empty house in the middle of nowhere full of all this stuff that no one wanted. And um, I photograph those kind of places a lot. Normally when I'd work in somewhere like this, I would use um, a medium format or a large format professional camera on a tripod, so I'd get more detail, more, more tonal range, all those kinds of things. When I met my, my old friend Martin Parr the first time, he said, um, he said he was a documentary photographer, and if he got a good picture, it was a bonus. I said, Martin, I'm interested in good pictures. If, it, if it's a document, it's a bonus. This is material um, to explore the medium with. <laughs> I can't believe you're so excited. You know? <laughs> really. I lived in this, this one small place called New Brighton across the River Mersey from Liverpool. And one of the places I always went to was a market outside of town. And because it was out of town, there was no kind of false, you know, people would be there in the curlers or just, you know, really natural. And I went every Saturday and tried to photograph these women Aww. week after week, month after month. Catching the women, looking them in the eyes seemed like a natural connection. But um, and I did it openly. I never used a long lens and hid behind a, a lamppost, you know. There's always a wide angle lens and I'm really close to them. There's a picture called Three Wise Women, which was made not at the women's market. Uh, but a, a, a car boot sale. And uh, I'd go there every Sunday morning. I had a mate used to go there to, to buy stuff and we would leave about half past five. I'd be on the gate as people came in to tell them that um, I wasn't trading standards, I wasn't, you know, uh, DHSS. Um, I was just doing this project for myself and uh, so they wouldn't be scared and worried when they saw me later. It's a heavy one, don't you? That's a bit well. better, yeah. I think. to take pictures most of the time is easy and natural and good fun. When I'm out working, I'll have the camera on my shoulder if it's large format or ready in my hand to, to use. Otherwise, if it's in a bag, you know, you have to take the lens cap off and stuff, you know, you think, ah, oh, it's not interesting, I won't bother. You know, the whole key thing is, is to just to have a go. You only start and that involves decisions and processes and one decision leads to another and suddenly you might get a good picture. But other people have spoke about how photography is the easiest of our forms. And then maybe that makes it the hardest. But it's, it's easy to get a good picture. And the second roll of film I ever shot was my best selling picture, and I, st I still like the picture. We're in a little town called Ballycastle in the west of Ireland, and there's an art centre here. Uh, this is my little studio, and um, I'm working on this Irish book, pictures which go back to the 70s. I lived here till I was about three years old. We emigrated um, and came back every summer to spend my summer holidays here. And then it was only when I came back as an art student in 